Uh, as you can see, we have the microphone in front of us, and there is a clock right to your right. And after the presentation from the staff, I'll be asking how many public hearings we've had, and that will determine if it's two minutes or one minute, because uh, we have a very hefty number of cards here. And so, for two items actually, so I want to make sure we're cognizant of your time as well as my colleagues, and not losing a quorum. So that being said, as you come to the microphone, please give us your name and address. Also, if there is someone who has stated your position, please feel free to say I agree with the previous speaker so we don't hear the same thing over and over again. If you have something new to add, please do so so the committee could learn from your perspective. Many of you might have worked on some very eloquent letters, and sometimes you get halfway through and time is up and you're frustrated because you didn't get to the final statement. So please keep in mind when you're reading your letters, get to your final points uh, within the time frame allowed. That being said, being said Roberto, uh, it looks like we can do uh, some items on consent here. Please, Adam, um, why don't you just read them to the record and then we'll uh, move on them. Uh, I believe the consent items, Councilman, are item one, which is a zone change uh, accompanied by a track map to allow the construction of a 10 unit single family subdivision in CD 12. And item two, it also in consent, possibly, it's a Cultural Heritage Commission report uh, nominating the Bob. Uh, Baker Marionette Theater as a historic cultural monument. Okay. Um, my understanding of the director will not be here for. Okay. So we'll move items one and two on consent. Councilmember? Second. Second. So moved. So that brings us to item number three. Roberto? Um, uh, yes, Councilman, actually, it's uh, there's 3A, 3B, and 3C. Uh, they're all interrelated. Item 3A is the appeal by Mike Everloft and also by the Westwood staff of Santa Monica and Beverly Wood Home, Homeowners Association. They're appealing various entitlements as it relates to a mixed use development for 262 multifamily residential units in CD5. And 3B would be the city attorney prepare uh, amendment ordinance to the Century City North specific plan and a proposed development agreement, and 3C is the associated track map. Okay, so can we have the staff come on up on 3 A, B, and C, and we can get your report started, please? Now, before you begin, uh, can you just show us how many public hearings have we had on this matter? Sure, Councilman. There was an EIR scoping meeting, a public hearing that was approximately five hours held in the community. A How long ago was that? That was uh, in July of last year. Okay. In November of last year, there was a multi-hour hearing held before the City Planning Commission, and that was in November of last year. So we had two public hearings, both going more than four hours, five hours. Correct. Okay. Okay. Okay, please proceed. Okay. The item before uh, the committee this afternoon is the expansion of the Century City Westfield Shopping Center. The proposal is a mixed use project that would add 358,000 square feet of retail, 106,000 square feet of office. 262 residential units in a 39-story tower. In order to accomplish this um, expansion, the um, shopping center has acquired two office buildings, and those buildings would be demolished to make way for the new expanded shopping center and residential. Um, staff recommends um, 
approval of the project based on the commission's approval and the consistency with the Century City area and the advancement of planning goals, including improving the pedestrian environment and economic activity. The project was submitted three years ago in early 2006 and worked its way through the process with public hearings last year during 2008. The project includes a development agreement to assure public benefits as well as mitigations based on the EIR. The public benefits include a contribution to the Mayor's Housing Trust Fund, over $1.5 million in greening improvements um, towards a linear park and other improvements, new traffic lights along Century Park West, a cash contribution and startup of a Century Citywide Transportation Management Organization, a community room, a police facility offer, LEEDS Silver certification on the project, an offer to dedicate a subway portal for the future expansion of the red line to Century City, as well as support for the Century City bed and maintenance of public improvements. There are two appeals outstanding. They raise a variety of issues, but the two largest issues are infrastructure and traffic. These issues are studied extensively in the EIR. There are significant impacts as to traffic, but I'd like to share two things for the, the committee to consider. The first is that there are overriding considerations before you, and the second is that those impacts are not significant until the final phase of this project, the office phase, and the project's been conditioned that this phase can only be constructed if the applicant reduces traffic through traffic demand management to make those impacts no longer significant. So based on that, what we would recommend is denial of the appeal and approval of the project, including the commission actions as well as the development agreement, which is before you in the form of a report from the city attorney. Um, the amendment to the specific plan, which is in the form of a report from the city attorney. So specifically, should the committee choose to make a motion today, we would recommend that you deny both appeals, that you adopt the development agreement per the city attorney's report, as well as the specific plan amendment with the one-line correction, which the city attorney um, has submitted. So we'd ask that that be part of your action and that you adopt the corrected findings and conditions as were submitted to the clerk in March from the Department of City Planning. Yes, ma'am. Terry Kaufman, Messiah City Attorney's Office. The, um, the revised ordinance with the corrections is dated um, May 26th, so that's how you can tell okay. on the signature line. Thank you, Madam City Attorney. Okay, um, anything else to add from the staff? Can we have a question? Questions. Sure. What happened to your arm? Uh, I fell skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said this was submitted three years ago? This Correct. This application? And how, this is just a totally separate matter, how long does it usually take for these applications to go through the city process? Is it typical? Um, for a project of this size with this volume of environmental review, this is within the range of typical, if maybe a couple months over, but pretty close. Okay. And, and, but there aren't that many in the city that are uh, uh, like this one who are as big as this one? No. Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, we'll proceed with, thank you, sir. We'll proceed with the appellants. There are two appellants on record. Appeal filed by Mike Evelov as well as um, the Westwood South uh, Santa Monica Association, Beverly Wood Home Association. My understanding is Barbara Boyd. So we'll hear from the parents first. Good Hi. afternoon. My name is Beverly Palmer uh, from Stromwasser and Wucher. 10940 Wilshire Boulevard, Suite 2000, uh, 90024. 
Um, I'm here on behalf of a coalition of homeowners and community associations, including the California Country Club HOA, Cheviot Hills HOA, Cheviot Hills Traffic Safety Association, Overland Avenue Community, Track 7260 HOA, West of Westwood HOA, Westwood Garden Civic Association, and Westwood HOA. Uh, the coalition is finalizing an agreement with Westfield and expects to formally enter into an agreement prior to June 2nd, 2009. The agreement provides significant benefits for the communities uh, neighboring the project site. While the coalition does preserve its appeal rights, we wish to note that we support the project as conditioned in the agreement between the coalition and Westfield. We urge the committee to incorporate the revised conditions of approval and mitigation measures negotiated by the coalition and Westfield before sending this project to the council. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Murdoch. I'm an attorney, and I represent the other two appellants. That's Westwood South of Santa Monica Boulevard Association and Beverlywood Homes Association. We have met with the uh, project applicant as recently as this morning. We believe we will have a final agreement by June 2nd. We urge you to adopt some of the measures that they're uh, proposing to be put in the development agreement because we have requested them. Basically, that's a recycling plan and a water plan. And th these are very beneficial, we believe, to the city. We also believe that the other aspects that they're agreeing to in terms of providing funding for local measures for traffic monitoring and other devices of that nature will be beneficial. And assuming we reach agreement, we will be supporting that. And so thank you very much. Thank you. I believe that covers all the appellants. We'll go down the list now. We have uh, Sunny Sturd with Westfield. And I believe John Goodwin. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Cindy Starrett from Latham & Watkins. I think the appellants may have stolen my, my thunder a little bit here, but we have been working very hard um, to reach agreement on additional conditions. We would ask for your um, indulgence to give you a brief project presentation that will talk about the community benefits and the additional infrastructure contributions that we're proposing. We think that would be appropriate given the development agreement is also uh, before the committee. Uh, if possible, John Goodwin and I could go through that pretty quickly. That's fine. Is three minutes enough? Um, I think if we could have three minutes each, we'll, uh, we'll rush through it. Is How that... many of you are there? Excuse me? How many of your representatives are Just there? Just John Goodwin and I. Just two of us. Okay. Uh, we also brought a model with us this morning, and we'll just, uh, we're going to just bring it over here and, and show it to you all. And then we have some boards, but I'm going to pass them out to the committee. And our architects, uh, this is Bob Hale and Mike Sweeney from Rios Clemente Hale. Okay. And I'm going to ask John to come up here, and he and I will do this together, Sorry. and we'll promise to keep it in the, within the six minutes. This is a model of Century City. Um, I don't know if the committee members can see that. It would be better if we held it up for you. That's okay. I don't want to hurt their backs. <laughs> And, uh, and John's on his way up here with the boards. But you can see um, the new project here on the left is the, the Century City Shopping Center. Uh, we, Westfield has worked very hard to make this a sustainable project. Uh, we're trying to invest for a green future as one of, the model, one of the mottos of the project. And let me ask John to come up here and he'll go through the architecture and then I'll come back and talk about the community benefits and the things we're asking to add. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Goodwin. I'm Vice President of Development for Westfield. Uh, and my address is 11601 Wilshire Boulevard. Councilman, after many years of planning, it's very exciting to be before Plum today. Three minutes, we just threw away 20 boards, so I'll get to this as quick as I can. Um, we're here to look at the next 40 years. This project was built 45 years ago. And if you look at our top grossing store at the moment, it's an Apple store. Try and tell someone in 1964 what an Apple store would sell, what, what you'd use it for. You can see that you really can't guess the future, but there are certain givens, especially environmentally, that we can address now, especially when it comes to transportation, subway solutions. I'll quickly walk you through the moving pieces. I think that's the best way to use my three minutes.
the plan that you see is the final plan, which basically says, if you look at the if you look at the aerial view, and I'll just mark this up. In 05, we completed a makeover of the century. That's as far as we could go without coming back to you. It basically said, let's put in new cinemas, a new dining terrace, some le second level retail. And at that point, we, s we sort of felt we could do cosmetic work from that point on. We had the opportunity to buy two aging office buildings on diagonal corners. And you can see these highlighted small, but they're in pink. If you take those guys out, you take a third of a million square feet of office space and take all those trips off the roads, reinvest those back in a true mixed-use project that incorporates residential back with new retail. Uh, the result is that by tearing those buildings down, not only can you do that mix, you can actually start to relocate some of the pieces. It's basically a Rubik's Cube. Right in the center is a very large anchor store. Almost abutting it is the second anchor store. Absolutely lousy as far as the retail layout goes. By taking the Bloomingdale store and taking it out into a flagship location on the corner of Avenue of the Stars and Santa Monica Boulevard, you can actually reinvent. It's no longer just adding pieces to it. You can really reposition this for the next 40 years. We're looking at more open space. We're looking at rooftop parking with solar power, looking at a subway connection down through here. Sustainability is not just the architectural materials. It's the way we will operate the center. Looking at alternate energy, uh, water use, correct landscaping. I would have put Bob on, but um, I'm just looking to see how much time I've got. Um, I'll go to the next board. Our focus from the day we bought it was that Santa Monica Boulevard basically features the back end of a parking garage. And we always said, when we finally figure out a plan, it will connect to the community. When you drive down Santa Monica Boulevard, this will have a presence. We'll have people dining, sitting out, uh, facing the street. You'll actually know what it is. You won't need to put arrows and say, enter here. The next board that I'll just bring across um, was one that we actually, it was a rock sugar development. And that's sort of a hint of what's coming. They were going to go to Beverly Hills. We work with the community, uh, work very fast, secured them. It really gives a hint of the difference between looking at a park uh, parking structure and true retail. Some of the solutions that we have implemented, uh, the bottom shows smart parking solutions, as simple as putting colored lights over every space. We have drastically improved the parking ability and time it takes to seek a spot. What's the next one there? Yeah, let's bring this one up. The transit solution um, basically takes me into Cindy Sterrett and some of the commitments we've made. But we're very familiar with this. In London, um, in Sydney, San Francisco, we have centers that we have built and connected to subway stations. Tremendous. You know, this is the location a subway should stop at where there's activity. And it adds to that true mixed-use uh, nature of the development. Cindy, do you want to take it from here? And let me finish up very quickly. Um, first, I just want to acknowledge the leadership of Councilman Weiss. The greening of Century City plan was something he asked all the developers to come together in Century City and put together. Westfield has worked very hard on that. The Planning Commission approved it on Thursday. Implementing that sustainability plan is a huge part of this project. The pedestrian connections, the transit commitment, the Transportation Management Organization, we now have a two, over $2 million committed to that organization. Those were all because he and his deputies came to us and said, we have to make Century City a better place. We have to work with everyone around us. We have $16 million of community benefits agreed, and Councilman Weiss also told us, only agree to pay for specific infrastructure that are community benefits, no slush funds, no dollars, just community benefits. And that's what we've now done with all of the stakeholders around Century City. And perhaps I could come back at the end of the public testimony and make, make our specific submittals to you regarding the settlement of the appeals. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your hard work. And now uh, we'll proceed with the public hearing.
We have Vanessa Rodriguez and Joey Da Victoria Lobo and Joey Hyman. Good morning, Council, or afternoon, rather, Council Members. Vanessa Rodriguez with the Los Angeles Area Chamber of Commerce, representing 1,600 member companies employing about 800,000 employees throughout the region. And it is my great pleasure to stand before you on behalf of the Chamber in support of Westfield's new Century Plan. The plan will further revitalize Century City while incorporating state-of-the-art environmentally friendly practices and technologies and providing acres of open space. During these turbulent economic times, it is important to embrace projects that strengthen the city's economy and increases its tax base. It is estimated that the new Century Plan will generate about $19.6 million in new tax revenue at build-out and create nearly 11,000 new construction jobs. As you know, construction jobs create economic ripple effects by providing business for supporting industries and allowing dollars to be quickly circulated back into the economy as workers spend their salaries and the demands for goods and services increase. The New Century Plan and projects just like it are exactly the kind of investment our region needs to bolster our local economy while providing long-term benefits. On behalf of the Chamber, I respectfully request you in joining us with your support for this project. Thank you. And Barbara, can we move it to one minute given all the hearings we've had? Yes, I apologize. Please, oh again, folks. You can start talking. You don't have to wait. There, okay. okay. Can we turn on service and make sure the speakers can see the time? Thank, okay. thank you very much. Come on up. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Anjali Da Victoria Lobo, and I'm speaking today on behalf of Service Employees International Union. United Service Workers West, Local 1877. Our local, as you may know, helps low-wage workers like janitors achieve social and economic justice. We are here today because we support Westfield 100%. They are a committed partner in raising standards for working families and have consistently shown leadership in supporting quality jobs for all. For example, because Westfield uses union cleaning contractors in their shopping centers, the janitors who work there have good jobs, earn wages on which they can raise a family with dignity and enjoy access to, equal to quality health care. Additionally, Westfield guaranteed family health care coverage to our members working in the San Diego shopping center well before any other SEIU clients in that city did. This sort of leadership has been shown by Westfield in other cities across the country. We at SEIU Local 1877 don't get to say this often, but we feel that Westfield is exactly the kind of employer we need to see in this city, Thank and you. we hope you will support this project. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. My name is Jay Hyman. I live in 2122 20, Century Park Lane, number 303, LA 90067. I'm the president of the Century City Homeowners Alliance. Uh, we represent, we, we attempt to preserve the quality of life for all 1,760 homeowners who live in Century City. Uh, we feel that Westfield is more than a shopping center, it's a good neighbor. Our members go to Westfield, meet friends, and uh, go there to be entertained. Uh, we support the new Century plan. Uh, although Westfield's development may well increase midday traffic, I don't think it's going to increase rush hour traffic, which is really important. Uh, we do have a traffic problem, though, in West LA, and it's a horrible problem. And I think we should use some of the funds, the taxes and fees created by this development to begin to do something about it. I would like to ask you to consider commissioning an independent study by a private firm not constrained by political considerations to come up with near-term and long-term solutions to the traffic problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. David Kirsch, Dan McDonald, and Charlene Lee. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Council Members. Uh, my name is David Kirsch. Uh, I'm the Government Affairs Representative for the Carpenters Contractors Cooperation Committee. Our organization is comprised of the 65,000 member strong Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters and its signatory contractors. I am here to show our firm support for the new Century Plan. This project is at the heart of the re revitalization of Century City and its role as a vibrant economic, residential, and entertainment center. 
The new century plan will create thousands of good paying construction jobs with health care and pension benefits as well as apprenticeship training opportunities for youth in our communities to have a chance at a rewarding and productive career in the trades. At a time of serious economic difficulties and widespread concern about job losses, we applaud Westfield's actions to simulate the economy and create quality long-term employment opportunities. This is consistent with its ongoing commitment to taking the high road when it comes to the construction workers who build its various development projects. This is an important development project, and we urge approval of the entitlements. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Kirsch. Then we go serving Lee and Harold Katz. Good afternoon. My name is Dan McDonald, 5164 Santa Monica Boulevard. I'm a representative of Carpenters Local Union in Welcome. Los Angeles, 1506, and here in strong support of Westfield's new century plan. For the obvious reasons, as we our economy faces a full-blown recession, Westfield's here willing to put its money where its mouth is with hundreds of millions of dollars in investment, creating over 10,000 new construction jobs and generating tens of millions of dollars in new revenue for the city when we need it the most. And that's why we're asking for your support and approval for the Westfield's new century plan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. I should start talking while the clocks are not working. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Harold Katz. I live at 10724 Wilshire Boulevard. I am a citizen activist and a CPA by profession. Uh, I moved into Century City in 1965. <clears throat> I was attracted there by Alcoa's concept of building a beautiful new city with greenery and, and setbacks and the beautiful fountains and bridges. And some 40 years later, I find that in dealing with Westfield, that they bring to the table the same concepts that Alcoa did. They have been incredibly cooperative with the community. Uh, they have really worked with us. They helped the Century City Chamber of Commerce uh, develop a traffic study that is going to lead to this transportation demand management program. And I would just say that I support the project as it is currently designed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Charlene Lee, one more time. Marvin Frank. Susan Bursk. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Charlene Lee. I live at 1441 Veteran Avenue, uh, Los Angeles 90024. And um, I just want to say that the, there are many um, good practical arguments for this project, um, but there are also some finer intangibles. Um, and I, was, I wanted to share a story. I was uh, visiting a green condo the other day. And I was really excited about it. And, um, but it wasn't until I stepped onto the bamboo flooring that I realized that I had crossed literally into a new era, um, sort of beyond the looking glass. And that we as a community have also crossed into a new era, um, one in which we've changed the kind of spaces we choose to inhabit and the ways in which we choose to cohabitate with our communities. Uh, so given the scale, of the Westfield Century Plan. This project will establish a benchmark for such an era, and I strongly urge you to support it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. With Marvin Frank, yes. Susan Bursk, and my name see. is uh, Marvin Frank, 1816 Fairburn Avenue. As a senior, I believe I speak for many other seniors living in or around Century City, especially those who don't drive. The place is a godsend for seniors comfortable, walkable, safe destination where one could grocery shop, bank, see a movie, meet friends, etc. However, as inviting as it is, there's still too much concrete. Uh, the place needs more greenery, trees, walkways, and that sort of thing. I believe the new plan will help uh, remedy this. Needless to say, the $800 million investment in this plan will be a big shot in the arm for the local economy. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. 
My name is Susan Bursk, uh, 2029 Century Park East. Chairman Reyes, members of the Plum Committee. I'm here on behalf of the Century Seed Chamber of Commerce and the thousands of employees, property owners, and property managers to express our strong support for the approval of Westfield's New Century Plans and its currently designed. I'd like to ask those supporters of the New Century Plan to please stand. You've come here today. If you could please stand. Thank you. I want you to know Westfield is vital to Century City in the West Los Angeles region. They are an integral part of the community, incorporating sensible and principled planning in all their ongoing and growth activities. The new Century Plan embraces smart growth and completing the vision that began 50 years ago, a sustainable community which includes a balance of offices, residential development, commercial space, and entertainment opportunities, giving people a place in which to live, work, shop, relax, without the need to drive great distances. The Century City Chamber of Commerce and its members enthusiastically support this project and believe it's an inter part of the urban vision that the Century City Forefathers created so many years ago. And personally, I want to thank Councilman Derek Weiss for the legacy he's leaving with the Greening Plan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next group of speakers, Michelle Galakian, Lauren Ziegler, and Carol Spencer. Good afternoon, ma'am. Well, my name was last on the list, but I guess I'm the first but one you're out. first on the mic. That's great. I'm Caroline Spencer. I live at 10316 Wilkins Avenue, Los Angeles, 924. I represent Comstock Hills Homeowners Association as its first vice president. I'm here to say that our association has made a settlement with Westfield that accomplishes our goal of having the 49-story mixed-use tower reduced to 39 stories and that our organization be given mitigation funds to offset impacts to our community. Based on our agreement with Westfield and my statement, Comstock Hills does not oppose the project. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hello. Lori Ziegler on behalf of the Century Woods Condominium Association. I am here to express our support for the new Century Plan project at the Westfield Century City Shopping Center. Westfield has done an excellent job reaching out to us and other members of the community, and based on this ongoing dialogue, we have been able to reach an understanding with Westfield that addresses our concerns. We are extremely happy that the new Century Plan will provide a number of important benefits to the Century City community, including $1.5 million of funding for a pedestrian path along Century Park West and funding for a traffic signal at the entrance to Century Woods. We are also very happy that Westfield has committed to making the project a sustainable green development by committing to achieve a silver level of LEED certification for the project. Please approve the new Century Plan project and support the development of Century City into a pedestrian friendly green environment. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have uh, Michelle Garakian, Mike Carlin. I believe it's um, a process how to read the, the letters Ziba Gazemi. Gazemi, I apologize. And uh, Ron Libo, sir. Yeah, Mike Carlin, Century City News, uh, publisher and editor. One billion dollars. That's what Westfield is proposing to invest in our local economy. At a time when the federal government, the state governments, and all of our local governments are trying to find funding, Westfield has decided to invest in our economy. We should stand here and, and take that money as quick as we can and get this project going. It's going to create jobs. It's going to be good for Century City. Fifty years ago, Century City was, was formed. A lot has changed in 50 years. It's time to update things. It's time to make Century City that city of the future that it was envisioned to be. And a green and beautiful Century City with all of these new improvements. Thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. My name is Ziba Gassemi. I live at 10445 Eastbourne Avenue. I'm here today to speak in support of Westfield Plants, not only because I live in the community and uh, I care about what happens here, but I'm also an architect employed by Westfield. In that capacity, I can attest to incredible effort that Westfield puts into planning and design of uh, their shopping center. 
They aim for sustainable green design and operations standards, and they strive to create centers that are compatible with their surrounding communities. Wearing my local resident hat, four years ago, I bought my condo unit at the corner of Eastbourne and Pandora. I made the decision because I believe that the combination of Santa Monica Boulevard improvement and the shopping mall renovation will tremendously add to the value of my property. Most importantly, importantly, I love the fact that I can walk to the great restaurants, shops, and theater in just a few minutes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon. Ronald Lebo, 527 Loring Avenue, LA 90024. My office is at 1999 Avenue of the Stars, adjacent to the shopping center. 35 years ago, Century City was pre presented as a city of tomorrow. Today, some 35 years later, Westfield has proven that it is making this just that, the city of tomorrow. We commend Westfield for its efforts to date. We believe that its efforts going forward will prove that we have a gem of a place in the center of our city that can make Los Angeles very much a city. Thank you. Thank you. Our last speaker, I believe, is Jose Aguilar. How you doing? Um, let me be very blunt. We all pretty much share the same power grid, same electrical grid. And I just found out, because I'm a DWP committee, MOU, that from tier one to tier two, we're going to go as high as 72% rate increase. Now, knowing that there's a drought, knowing there's scarcity of water, knowing there's an Endangered Species Act federal lawsuit uh, with the smelt up north, also, the New Orleans Valley mitigation measures. Uh, our member council has taken a position, and we read it into the record, recommending that the Department of Environmental and Power stop issuing guarantees to developers of 20 units and above until the city complies with the requirement that it prepare an annual infrastructure study. The study needs to be done because we need to understand that. Do we have the water supply to facilitate these high density mixed use commercial development projects throughout the city? The issue is this it's supply and demand. So, thank you for your record. Thank you. Thank you very much. I believe that concludes the public hearing. Um, uh, comments, or any questions from. Excuse me. May this gentleman speak instead of Michelle Garakian, who was unable to be here, and you called her name earlier. He'll speak very briefly. Okay, please, please sir. Good afternoon. Hi, Jack. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I can't believe it anyway. I'm speaking here. You have to give you 30 seconds of my background. I came to this country. I had no education, no trade, and no English. And today to be speaking in front of a body like this is an honor and a privilege. You, I've been in Century City from day one. I started there as a janitor, and today I am a member of a publicly owned company and a former chairman of the Century City Chamber of Commerce and a permanent member of the Chamber of Commerce. I've been there since the first building was built, and I'm here to tell you that it's a beautiful project, and this is the lifeblood of this community. Whenever we start a project like this, it brings real, real power, and it brings enthusiasm, and brings everything that this community needs today. I urge you to pass this, because this is a project that will grace the better of our great city, and I urge you to really pass it, because it's going to bring labor to this community is going to bring employment is going to bring innovation and most important is going to bring more taxes to the city that we really need it thank you very much thank you sir congratulations to you okay now i have uh, i think most of my questions have been addressed i've been following this and um my only uh observation and, and, and comments is that uh, when it comes to the designated subway station area that's being reserved, is that based on an alignment that's being entertained by one of the corridors of extension or is it the line? 
Uh, thanks, Councilman. All the alignments currently under consideration by MTA include a stop in Century City. So the way the condition is worded is that Westfield is required to give an offer to dedicate um, for a portal there. If MTA determines that that's not the appropriate location and they do not take that opportunity, that's MTA's prerogative, but that's, that's how we framed the condition. Okay. Councilman? Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to thank everybody who came and spoke today, <clears throat> and particularly thank the folks from Westfield who've done such a marvelous job in uh, not just preparing this plan, but in winning over the community and making sure that we were here today uh, really with unanimity in support of the project. Um, one of the true joys of my time on the council has been seeing the plans grow for the new Century City and approving the buildings that will uh, go along with those plans. Uh, those buildings are going to go up for years and years to come. Uh, they are going to be very good for the west side and for all of Los Angeles. None of that would have happened without Renee Scalacci, who I see in the back, and Lisa Trifoletti, who's over here. Uh, the two of them together worked on uh, this project for years and years and years. And you guys um, should be very proud of uh, what's happening today. So I move approval. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Great. Any other comments, Councilman? Mr. Chairman, may I submit for the record the request that we're making in connection with the settlements? Yes, as long as the planning staff concurs. And I can just briefly summarize what they are. And I did give copies um, to planning and city attorney as soon as we got here. We okay. just literally came straight from the settlement discussion. Well, before you start, I want to make sure that the planning staff has seen this language and is in concurrence. Okay. Councilman, we have reviewed, and as to the intent of all the added language, um, we do concur. Well, it does propose changes to the development agreement. So those have to be certified by the city attorney. And they could do that prior to this going to full council. But I can't speak for them. OK. All right. So and, Mr. I can go ahead and read, and read, read For the up. development agreement, we're proposing that there be an addition of a specific water conservation plan and a recycling plan to, as exhibits to the development agreement. Uh, those are very de have a number of detailed provisions. It includes all the newest recommendations by the Department of Water and Power. Since this project was filed some years ago, it makes sure that we are adhering to all of those. It includes a, um, some additional mitigation measures on Century Park West to ensure that there are no adverse impacts on the neighbors there. Um, it includes some updates to the specific plan and conditions. And then we also would like to submit an additional voluntary paragraph about our commitment to workforce housing. We are making a voluntary commitment of a dollar a square foot. It's about $3,000 a unit of the project to affordable housing. Because that is a voluntary commitment, we are also asking that the city accept that with the understanding that it will be used specifically to support workforce housing in West Los Angeles. And that could include uh, paying down expiring covenants. We understand from the Housing Department there are some expiring covenants. It could also include uh, supporting other efforts to develop workforce housing. So I'd also like to, su to uh, submit a letter to the committee uh, with that additional request by Westfield asking that that money be earmarked for that purpose. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And so I was going to have a vote to move this forward, uh, given the stated changes and amendments that have been articulated uh, by the state and have been concurred by the planning staff. And um, yeah, I would just really quick to clarify once something is in a development agreement, it's not voluntary. So I just want to say that on the record, and we'll work with the city attorney on that language. OK. But you'll have that firmed up before it gets to council. Yeah, yes. OK. So then I also want to congratulate uh, Councilman Weiss's office and his efforts in getting to this point. And uh, Mr. Goodwin and Westfield for your uh, responsiveness to the needs of the quality of life of the city. So thank you very much. So that would be the actions uh, committee Council report. you do have to take an action on the appeal. I didn't, maybe I missed that. Deny the appeal. Thank you. And support the staff recommendation. Thank you very much. Okay, there were item four is just as engaging. Uh, so if we can ask the folks on item three, you'd like to step outside and allow for item four to begin and we're waiting for you to exit. 
so that we can hear all the speakers on item number four. We'll just pause for a couple of minutes. Item 4A and 4B, Councilman, uh, 4A is an appeal by the Melrose Neighborhood Association. Um, and um, this has to do with a site plan review and variances for alcohol uses. And it's a mixed use project with 219 apartment units. 4B is a general plan amendment and the ordinance for the same change. Hang on, Ted, if the first convey. Quiet there, please. We respect cooperation. Folks, by the three in the back of the room, can you please take it to the aisle? Outside of the room, please. Okay, we can begin the report from the staff. Good afternoon, Craig Weber, planning staff. The project is a mixed-use development at uh, Willoughby and La Brea. It consists of 219 dwelling units and 35,000 square feet of commercial floor area. Uh, the City Planning Commission originally approved the project in 2007 following two meetings. So there was a public hearing, two planning commission meetings, one meeting here at Plum, and a scoping meeting with respect to your question about how many public hearings have been involved. Um, the planning commission did recommend approval of the requested zone change, uh, the general plan amendment to uh, neighborhood commercial, the site plan review, a zone variance and conditional use to allow offsite alcohol sales. Um, since that time, the site plan review and the, the conditional use for alcohol sales have been appealed. Um, the rest is subject to council action. Um, at the original Plum hearing for this project, um, the Planning Commission had recommended a mitigated negative declaration as no environmental impacts were identified for the project. Plum requested that an EIR be completed, and the applicant has since completed that EIR. Following the completion of the EIR, the applicant has slightly revised the project in response to local concerns about building mass. Um, essentially, the westerly portion of the project has been reduced in height from 75 feet to 54 feet. And the easterly portion of the project, which fronts La Brea, um, has been re increased in height from 75 feet to, I believe, 84 feet. Um, the planning department has recommended an errata to the EIR, which would essentially indicate that no impacts are identified with the change and that the project as modified is within the scope of the original EIR. Um, having said that, planning staff is recommending approval of the project. Okay. Any questions for the staff? Seeing none, we'll start with the appellants. Thank you, sir. I believe we have a Lucia Sanders. As one of the appellants, can you like to step forward, please? And give us the reason for your appeal. You have before you, I, I gave to um, the office, do they have the brochure that shows our vibrant, healthy, diverse community? unlike what the applicants have shown. I also have 100 letters and over 600 petitions signed by nearby and affected neighbors, business owners on the industrial property, other community leaders. I'm speaking for the La Brea Willoughby Coalition, and this is to continue our years-long opposition to the proposed La Brea Willoughby Gateway Project. The system is not working right for citizens. We have attended multiple meetings and hearings without being heard 
Please hear us now. This is a nice project, just in the wrong place. It is time for this body to act as an honest broker to truly look into all the facts on this proposed project. This is a critical moment to allow citizens to be fully involved in the planning process. To that end, we urge a brand new review and re-evaluation of this project after the newly elected council member has been seated. I have proxies of people who would like for me to speak and represent them today who are not here because of the hearing scheduling. It has been postponed twice and a great majority of us must work at the time and place it is being held. Please keep going. It would be laughable were it not so egregious how this project has been repeatedly thrust on this neighborhood by the developers and the council office since it was first presented full-blown on the 27th of July 2005. From that day to this, it has been a bad planning process and to continually repeat gross distortions and misrepresentations will not change the facts. And it is extraordinary that the developers proclaim a community meeting on that day and I live four houses from the site for 28 years for which I was not invited. And the high praise and the meeting consisted primarily of and from teenager, teenaged yeshiva students and they continue to pack these meetings. These and other reckless ploys have been implemented throughout the process and have, point, have been pointed out to the applicants and city, at city offices at subsequent hearings, but to no avail. They persist in these questionable practices. Applicants repeatedly state community input into the project, which implies it has been an open, transparent, and participatory process. This is contrary to the facts. In other meetings throughout the years, the developers presented valid community groups with significantly the same project. And that's what's being presented today. They're just pushing it towards La Brea and they're putting lipstick on this pig. And though it has been soundly rejected for years, the developers continually stated community input has been considered. Yes, considered, but summarily dismissed regardless of the monumental neighborhood opposition and our experts' findings to refute the project. The applicants have continually touted the benefits of the community, which is why we live here. But the city and the applicants consistently ignored the predictable, permanent, negative impacts of the project on the community. The city has an obligation to act through due diligence as an independent oversight agency with long-term benefits and best interests of the city, the community, and the environment in go as goals. Indeed, the entire machinery of the city planning process justified, substantiated, defended, and drove toward the foregone conclusion, which was told to me by several parties the project is a done deal. I resist it. I challenge that, and I hope that you too also, because the city has not conducted its oversight responsibilities of the EIR process as specifically documented by the neighborhood experts. The city relied on the applicant's consultants and speculations such as job production and transient oriented development, the city has simply acquiesced and accepted the findings of developers consultants without taking valid fundamental planning 
or even economic questions into consideration. The city charter mandates new development must be supported by public infrastructure to match the development's impact. Are you close to finishing? I am close to finishing. I have 20 proxies of people who want me to speak for, for them. There are people who okay, have I'm not doing proxies. I'm giving you your due time. Okay, thank As an you. appearance, I want you to okay, thank see you. if you can finish. Though the Consul Office has always stressed its neutral position and declared consideration of size, scale, and character of the project to the neighborhood, the office has consistently, actively supported the project. Indeed, it has advocated for the project and spoke on project developers as we. Indeed, it has colluded in a public-private partnership, which really means backroom deals with politicians and special interests. Public citizens were not equally represented and not a part of making the deal. We believe in progress in a neighborhood we have invested in, in the community we want to live in. The community acted to, re to promote the pre preservation of the diminishing industrial land and provide for higher pay industrial jobs in the community as the mayor's I need you to conclude. I need you to finish. I shall. We engage the CRA, the mayor's business team, and independent industrial developers to develop a cleaner, greener industrial complex on the site. Our efforts were spurned with the information that the political, and that's the consul office, did not support our intentions. I will say this. I wish we had had the interaction that apparently the neighbors of the Westfield project had, and we have not, and this is why we will continue this fight for the quality of life in our Thank you very much. I gave you the most time to else. Thank you. I appreciate Thank that. Thank you very much. Our next appearance is Bill Christopher. Good afternoon, Councilman. Um, my name is Bill Christopher. My address is 732 North Gardner Street in Los Angeles, 90046. I'm here this afternoon representing the Melrose Neighborhood Association, uh, which is comprised primarily of the directly impacted neighbors uh, direct in the direct vicinity of the project. Uh, except that I'm not sure what the project is today. Um, the developer or the staff indicated that there were significant changes to the project, none of which have been uh, disseminated to anyone in the community. There is no staff report today for your action. There is no uh, accounting for how the environmental impact report is to be uh, folded into your decision. The Planning Commission in their action did not uh, review the EIR because the EIR came after their action. Can I ask you to pause for a second there? Sure. I'd like to ask the staff directly at this time to respond to that assertion. Uh, is staff here? Good uh, afternoon. Craig Weber, planning staff. The, the project was originally approved by the City Planning Commission in 2007, at which point that letter of determination is transmitted to this committee. A considerable amount of time has passed since then. Um, the subsequent recommendation of this committee was to prepare an environmental impact report, and that report has been prepared and is a part of the public record as well. The changes to the project, which are summarized within the errata, which is being submitted into the record today, are minor. And as indicated in the presentation, don't include any changes to the number of dwelling units or square footage, but really is a shifting around of building mass. To repeat, the, the westerly portion of the building would be diminished in height, from 75 feet to 54 feet, and the easterly portion of the building would see an increase from 75 to 84 feet. But there wouldn't be a change in floor area, number of units, and so on. Okay. So I just want to make sure for the record that we're responding to that assertion. Charlie Roush, Planning Department staff, and um, the request for the environmental impact report came from the committee, um, and so that is what is before you today as the environmental clearance on the project. So. The EIR, the description of EIR is what, what is before us, and it sounds to me that the impact has been lessened because of the heights have dropped, so. That's not entirely true. Okay, let's give me your facts. The, 
from what I understand from staff, the heights at the western end of the project have been lowered. However, to compensate for the lowering that portion, they have raised the height on the eastern portion toward, That's true. toward the La Brea fr okay. frontage. Now, no one in the community has been uh, informed of any of that. There has been no public discussion of any of those changes. Now, there has also been no specific public discussion of how your, the environmental conditions are being applied from the EIR to the zone change or the, uh, the committee's actions. Okay. So we're in the dark. Okay. So all I can do is go back into my original presentation, which was prepared bef before the uh, staff ch noted the changes. And Mr. And Christopher, like to... as a former commissioner, I appreciate your insight. Yes. So I'm really a planning commission for many years. Please go ahead. What we have before you today is a project which puts nine acres of industrial property at risk. The site that we're dealing with is slightly over two acres. However, it's part of a nine-acre block, and once you in, uh, infuse 225 new residences into that block, um, the die is reasonably well cast that the rest of the block will follow suit. So it's not just two acres of industrial land that's that's at risk here, but a total of nine acres on that entire block. The current zoning on the property is MR1. It's planned for light industrial. Those are inconvenient facts that the developer has tried to work through for the last two years, but has been unable to make them go away. The MR zone is particularly dis uh, continue. Yes, particularly uh, crafted to um, prevent the intrusion of residential uses into industrial land, pre precisely what's happening in this situation. Similarly, the uh, Hollywood Community Plan currently calls for the retention of the uh, motion picture industry and the retention of the industrial properties that support it. Again, we're violating that uh, tenant as well today. As far as the appeal is concerned, we're actually here on an appeal for the CUB. We have more than enough liquor outlets in the community. We have four Ralphs, we have two um, Whole Foods, we have a Pavilions, uh, we have two Trader Joe's. Uh, another market is not what we need. And it's really, really bad planning. What you have here is a, uh, a situation where you're creating an RAS zone with a northern and western boundary line directly abutting industrial use with no buffer. Now, any, any planner in the planning department will tell you that that's a really, really bad idea. And again, we have a situation where we're using the RAS zoning. The RAS was created to make use of the, the basically 125-foot deep commercial land, which uh, abuts most of the, of the arterial highways in the city. It wasn't intended for industrial land, and in this situation, the, uh, the applicant intends to take a left turn, basically, and drive that commercial, that commercial strip 500 feet to the west into the residential area. And this action that you're contemplating today is a six and a half million dollar gift to the developer. Basically, that's the differential uh, value between industrial land and residential land for our four uses. That six and a half million dollars isn't buying you anything. There are no affordable housing units in this project. None. And it's also way out of scale with anything in the community. This is a community of one and two story buildings. This is a seven story, now eight story monolith. It is not in scale with anything in the surrounding community. And it's 400,000 square feet. You'll hear it described as a 240,000 square foot of, uh, residential or uh, uh, retail building. But in fact, when you add 165,000 square feet of above grade parking, you get 400,000 square feet of stuff that's above ground. It's big. And the traffic is gonna be a little bit of a mess. The magic of the traffic engineer says that a lot of the traffic will come in off La Brea and go out this little alley up to Romaine. But in fact, any reading of common sense indicates that the traffic will come in and, off and go out Willoughby, which is where the main entrances and accesses are. Willoughby is a 30-foot wide street. 
It's a very narrow collector street in the community. It serves all of the residents of the community, and we're adding essentially 500 new cars to that street. On the question of the adequacy of the EIR, we've provided two responses to the EIR, first to the draft and then to the final. And we still consider that document to be seriously flawed and inadequate. I want to focus on one issue in the EIR. The issue has to do with land use and land use analysis. The EIR, or actually the final EIR, actually says that it's reasonable, uh, it's a reasonable analytic approach to assume that the, the uh, actions of the committee or the actions of the request will be granted before defining your uh, impact analysis, meaning that the bar for, for analysis is moved forward consistent with the request before any impacts are, now, are analyzed with regard to, to land use. This is crazy. You're, by logical definition, you actually are, <laughs> the requests are going to be consistent with the, uh, uh, with the project. So by moving the bar forward to match the request, there will be no land use Im impacts by definition. So why bother? That one actually, <laughs> uh, we're actually interested in litigating to, uh, to see what happens in the courts. But what we're asking you today to, is to just say no. This is an industrial land um, that could create viable jobs in the entertainment industry, which we desperately need uh, and which will be gone forever if, the, if you take this action. So we're asking you to, in a sense, just say no. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. I believe that covers all the appellants on the record. I uh, can proceed with the, um, the applicants of this project. Uh, perhaps they can respond to some of the assertions, and then we'll continue down through the process of identifying everyone that submitted a speaker card. Is there any other members for the record? Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, George Milston, Latham and Watkins on behalf of Library Gateway. Uh, this project has been in the city planning process now for almost five years. We have done everything that the planning department, the city planning commission, and the council has asked us to do. The project has received significant support from the community and the neighborhood council. It, in fact, was approved by the neighborhood council by a 30 to 2 vote. The project has received a recommendation for approval by planning department staff, as well as the city planning commission. The project originally received a recommendation for a mitigated negative declaration, which was prepared and processed, and that was submitted and certified by the Planning Commission in December of 2006, and then came forward to this committee. This committee asked that the project go forward and prepare a environmental impact report, which it did voluntarily, and it went forward and prepared an environmental impact report. That EIR, in fact, has confirmed that there are no significant unmitigated impacts associated with this project. The EIR is before you today and staff is recommending certification of that EIR. And that process has been reviewed with the city attorney and confirmed as the appropriate process that that EIR be before you to be confirmed. The project has been redesigned at the request of conversations with the neighbor council and also the planning commission and most recently in our discussions with the council office, the most recent changes are the ones that are reflected in the errata. And in fact, were reviewed with Mr. Christopher, Ms. Saunders, and Ms. Venskez uh, at meetings with, with them in the council office. So the, uh, the point of those changes to the project were to reduce the height along the area closest to the residential and increase the height uh, along the Brea. We believe those changes are appropriate and uh, we support them, and that is in the errata that is before you. It, may I continue, Mr. Chairman? Okay, conclude, please. I will. Um, as noted, La Brea is a transportation corridor. The transit station is about a half mile away. It is exactly where we want to provide density in this city. We think that is the most appropriate place for density in a mixed-use project like this. 
We request your approval, given the st st strong support from the community, and in an effort to save time, I'm going to ask members of the community to stand, if they would, who are here today, rather than have everybody testify. If I can have all the Thank supporters you. today. I don't have support. Okay. Thank you. We Thank also you submit much. for the record additional letters and petitions of support from the community. We ask your approval of this project, certification of the AR, approval of the zone change, approval of the general plan amendment as has been approved by the mayor's office. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. from the Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Lee Wagman, 100 Wilshire Boulevard in uh, Santa Monica. I'm the CEO of the Martin Group, uh, which is the applicant here for La Brea Gateway. I'm not going to review the um, process that's gone on. Mr. Milson has done that in at length. But let me just say this has been a five-year odyssey. It's involved uh, five separate public hearings two full environmental reviews and at each step of the process we have touched all the bases and um, met every requirement that's been asked of us. We've also had several direct meetings with a group of neighbors that are here today. We've listened to their concerns and in response to their requirements of the council office, Councilman Weiss specifically, we've made dozens of very substantial changes to this project. In particular, let me note that RAS 4, which is the requested zoning here, allows us to build 248 units and 300,000 square feet on the site. Over the course of the negotiations, we reduced the unit count to 219 and significantly reduced the overall size from 300,000 to 234,000 square feet, 22% reduction. We also added an entire row of townhouses on Willoughby to shield this commercial garage. We um, widened the pedestrian areas, we stepped down the podium height, we increased the building setbacks, and added vehicular entries off the road. I need you to conclude, sir. Um, can, I'm going to try to answer some of the uh, concerns. No, I need you to finish. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. Um, most recently, we made changes to the design where we separated the buildings into two separate buildings, lowering the height on the west and increasing the one on the, on the east. That makes that building on the west, the one that engages the residential community, uh, beyond the view of the pedestrians and drivers okay. on the street. Thank um, you very much, sir. May I have one, no, one minute you. more, given thank the length you. of time? We reserve time for the parents. You part of the public hearing process. I'm going to bring that down to one minute. Given all the public hearings we've heard, so we need to conclude. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just trying to be consistent. Okay, um, our next set of speakers. We have Jeffrey M. Jacobberger, David Hilliard. And Sabrina Vanskis, I believe. Please, Good afternoon. Sir. Jeff Jacoberger. I live at 5516 Edgewood Place, number one. I'm the vice chair of the Mid-City West Community Council. And as noted, uh, we had voted uh, 30 to, do, to 2 to support an earlier version of this project. Um, the rest is my personal comments. Um, I support the project. Um, we need to address the housing jobs imbalance in Los Angeles. And there's an arc of employment density that sort of goes from downtown up through Hollywood over to Santa Monica. And this project's right in the middle of it. So it provides housing um, where there's access to employment. Um, this has excellent access to transit. It's a block from Santa Monica Boulevard, which has a rapid bus. The bus that goes up La Brea has six minute headways at peak hour. And it's less than 10 minutes to the Hollywood and Highland Station. Um, it's close to shopping. It's just a few blocks from Poinsettia Park. It's a block from an elementary school and six blocks from the junior high school. Um, this is the location where we want to put housing, and I support the project. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Quickly, without the applause, believe me, David Hilliard, Sabrina Venskis, and Mary Magia, I believe. Yes, sir. David Hilliard, 11828 LaGrange Avenue, Los Angeles, 90025. I just have two things to add to what was said pre and that what has been said previously. One is that this represents a downzoning of the project. Currently, there's manufacture. The MR1 zone allows unlimited height, and it allows very dense 
uh, commercial uses, including an office uh, office space, which which would in which would generate yet more traffic than anything proposed here today. The second thing that, that, that I wish to say is that then this project will generate much more in the way of school fees and in the way of park fees than anything, any commercial use, and we need those very badly. That's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Sabrina Vanskos. <laughs> Melvi next. Hi, I'm Melvi Merguia, 710 North Martell. Um, and I am just outraged. Half of the people that stood up over there, I'm with the Melrose Neighborhood Association as well as with the Melrose Neighborhood Watch, and I don't recognize any of the neighbors over here that live in the area. So I'd like to see where they live and how close they live to this facility that is being proposed here. Because, and, and I'm disappointed at our councilman, and I'm thank God that you're not gonna be there anymore. Please, um, please. Sorry, but. If anybody, okay, I, I apologize, but I'm just outraged because if anybody that lives in the area knows that ever since the development on Gateway happened, La Brea is congested. They are taking Willoughby. If you ever want to drive down Willoughby about 4 or 5 o'clock, it's congested. It's a highway. People can't go on Santa Monica. They can't go on Melrose. They can't go on Fairfax or La Brea. And we, in, residents in that block, within that area, are bombarded with traffic. So I can't imagine how much more traffic this is going to bring. We already Thank have the EV that Thank you very had. much. So, Our next speaker. Hi, my name is Sabrina Venskis. I'm, I'm an environmental attorney. I'm representing La Brea Willoughby Coalition. And big picture here really is that we need to set the city of LA and the United States for that matter in a different direction than we've gone previously. And you know, this is industri this is industrially zoned land, light industrial that's historically supported the entertainment industry. We only have eight percent. Only eight percent of the city of LA land is zoned industrial. That's all we have left. Eight percent, and we're allow we're, we're considering zoning this land to be more residential. There's there's a place for residential development and there's a pl there's a place not for high density residential and this is not the place this is important land for the economic engine of the city of LA and it's also quite frankly a you know historically um, very vibrant community that supports both in, uh, in the entertainment industry and quaint Hollywood bungalows um, in in a, in a a very vibrant community. So I would ask on behalf of my client that you do what we believe is best for the city and that is maintain the economic engine of the city which is high paying light industrial jobs such as those in the entertainment industry. Again remember this was the KCOP site could um, again be but it doesn't really seem like you're listening to me so thanks. Thank you. Okay, my understanding is that the following folks are in support. That's Steve Zip, Wayne Sachs, and Steve Lemon. Is that true? If you can, you just raise your hand and we'll know, unless you feel compelled to speak, but thank you. Okay, Peter Binko and Steve Kramer. Good afternoon. My name is Peter Binko, 849 North D Detroit Street, uh, three houses from the proposed development. Um, I don't think this issue is about development versus non-development. I and most of my neighbors are pro-development. I grew up around developers and businessmen my whole life. I'm a businessman who employs 35 employees. But first of all, I don't think we're going to solve the financial problems of our state or city by converting business districts into residential districts, but if we are going to make that decision, let's do it intelligently. This is a neighborhood of single family and, and two-story homes and some rental units. Now, let's keep it like that. I think it's clear that most constituents in the city do not want these types of neighborhoods invaded and converted into five to seven story large buildings like we see in, in certain parts of Los Angeles. And, and that's what we ask is first, Let's not 
get rid of some of our business districts as I support some of the other speakers. But secondly, if we're going to do that, let's do it properly. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Kramer. Steve Kramer. Good afternoon. My name is Stephen Kramer. I'm president of the Miracle Mile Chamber of Commerce. I also sit on the Mid-City West Community Council. I sent you my uh, written statement in support of this application. I'd like to cede whatever seconds I have left to Wayne Sachs. Hi, my name is Wayne Sachs. I live at 448 North Formosa Avenue, uh, a few blocks south of the project. Um, uh, I'm here as a private citizen, but for four years I served on the Mid-City West Community Council. I was vice chairman of the council. I served for four years in the Land Use Committee, and, and for a while I chaired the committee. I'd like to say that while I have great respect for uh, Lucille Saunders, I have to disagree with the characterization of the nature of the public hearings. The developer came to us on numerous occasions before the application was pending and when it was in process. We had many hearings. Um, Mr. Christopher very ably and articulately presented the position of those opposed, and the Neighborhood Council voted in favor of the project. So I think there being heard does not mean one always wins. I believe the appellants and their allies were heard, but the community as at large didn't agree with them. I have two other brief points to make. One is, whatever the demand for housing will be in the near future in Los Angeles, more supply means lower rents. We need more rental housing. It's a good project. And second, finally, Mr. Christopher mentioned it's a low-rise area. Directly across La Brea, there is a building, an industrial building, about six or seven stories high, uh, that should you, be sir. in the record. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next is Lovato Lopez. Lovato Aguilar. And then Gumabo Ovedo Flores. My name is Leonardo Lopez, President of Comité de Esperanza. In return of this, of this gift, the developers do not intend to, to incorporate any affordable housing united into the, their, their project, none. Thank you. Gracias. Okay. Again, we'll pretty much share the city. I'm going to make it very clear. Um, the water shortage is a lot worse than what it appears to be. This, there's no environmental considerations. There's no water reclamation systems that this project maintains on site. We're going to have to incorporate water reclamation systems that's toilet to tap technologies on these high density mixed use commercial developments because the water shortage will dictate that very near into the future. You got AB32, which would then increase the cost of electricity. You got the capital trail, which is coming, which again will increase the cost of electricity. And then you have the tiering process this summer, which again, double or triple the water cost. So I'm saying we don't have the water, and we're going to have to pay exorbitant costs for electrical, and they're exacerbating all this with, with the densification um, of the city. Um, it's not going to work. We need to take a good look at our infrastructure, we need a survey of our infrastructure to determine the cost of these high commercial developments. Thank you. I'd like to uh, submit this for the record. Media alert. Thank you. Mr. Flores. I'm sorry. My name is Gumaro Flores from the Comité de la Esperanza. Um, the proposed seven levels, 75 tall buildings, drops anything presently existing in a community of predominantly one and two story buildings. It's way, way out of the scale with its surroundings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steve Zip. I did call out your name, like, come on up. My question is that you just want to show a stand of support with your presence, but okay. Steve Zip, I live at 824 North Poinsettia Place. And if they could hand you the pictures that I'm going to show you now in reference to the DNV that re recently went into and rented the building in the industrial section right next door to this property. It's caused traffic jams, caused backups because it's under parked. The property that we're talking about here today, it's under parked. If they just rented it out, it'd create traffic jams. We have to unload semi trucks on the street 
like um, the 99 cent store. If you look at the pictures, there's forklifts right now presently being driven on the street, dumping toxic waste at a paint center on Waring and La Brea. And that has since moved. The streets all cracked. It's all contaminated. And bikes are not legal to drive on the sidewalks, but forklifts are. This is a dangerous area to be. It's a 34-foot wide street, like they said. And semi trucks now have to park on the street because they can't back in. And if they build this project, it's going to be a lot safer for the community. And I Thank live you, in the sir. community and have grandchildren here walking these streets. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. We have Arturo Martinez, Arturo Martinez, and Patrice Daly. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Wizaran Weiss. I guess Mr. Weiss is not paying too much attention at this hearing, but so be it. Um, I'd like just to say, first of all, that the right project at the right place, like the one before us, shows how much accolades the developers can get. Unfortunately, ours is not the right project at the right place. Having said that, I'd just like to read quickly this letter. I'm speaking before you on behalf of the resident members of the Northern Neighborhood Association that are negatively impacted by the proposed Labrea Gateway project. These resident members have sent petition my phone calls to our council member and use all possible means to register their objection to the proposed project. Unfortunately, as is always the case, it's very difficult for residents to come in the middle of a work day to hear that does not guarantee a set time when the item will be there or if it will be there at all. Our objections are to extraordinary out of scale project in relation to the surrounding low density residential neighborhood is based on the following comments. Had it not been for the fact that a court order and EIR in response to a lawsuit against the Beverly Connection project we would not have been granted one. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Thank you very much. We just a second place because I have many people that are asking me to do this. No. We responded to the EIR. The response to ours from the city was condescending and insulting as they who, of course, are the experts with the key, the concerns and comments of the community. It is so that they are not looking. I am, I, I know. Thank you very much. much. I have to, to, to thank, I have you, to thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello, Councilman Reyes. Can you hear me okay? I'm not used to microphones. No, sir. And to all the members of the council today, I hope that you will give me a little more time to speak. I have 20 of my immediate neighbors. My name is Patrice Daly. I live at 858 North Formosa Avenue. I live directly across the street from where this project will go up. I am not the type to be politically involved, but I've had to become involved and to represent my neighbors because this has been from the beginning what it has seemed from the beginning a back room deal. We had to fight for an EIR that did not go into this approval 8 to 0 that was given by the commission. We had to fight tooth and nail to get everything before you because indeed this has been from the very beginning something that was almost as a done deal. I went around to my neighbors just on this weekend to ask if they could come to this meeting and if not if they would sign a proxy for me which they did. I asked them to tell me what they wanted me to say for them. And here are just a couple of things. The first is that it's inappropriate, because it is. It's on a massive scale compared to massive scale Thank compared you. to what it is. Thank you very much. Please vote against this. <clears throat> I am begging you. Thank you. Mr. Ortiz, Bruce Andrews, and Michael Barba. Good afternoon. <laughs> Uh, my name is Ursula Ortiz. I live on 842 North Detroit Street, three houses away from that, pro from that prospect project. Um, and um, just quickly, we live here for many, many years on that place. We love that area, and we should be enjoying, keep on enjoying this, right? And it's a relative quiet neighborhood. We all know each other, and grow up together, we have already now a tremendous impact of traffic. 
True to Target and DMV. I don't know if you are aware, there is DMV now. Every day, droves of people streaming there and cars. DMV, which is right there, <coughs> it makes it almost impossible to get into Willoughby. So I live in Detroit. I want to go out, out to go my, do my business. And I cannot go into Willoughby. There is a rows of cars, blocks after blocks of cars. Thank you, Ms. Ortiz. Thank you very much. Please vote against us. Thank you very much. Bruce Andrews? Uh, Bruce Andrews had to leave. Okay. No, Thank you. Michael Barber, please. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Michael Barba. I live at 806 North Vista Street. Um, I'm a resident of the Melrose area. I'm also on the Mid-City West Neighborhood Council, um, the Land Use Committee and uh, Transportation Committee. Um, I, I'm, I'm a new member to the, to the board, and one of the reasons that I joined the board is because of this project. I'm opposed to it on all levels. Uh, primarily, its size and scale for the neighborhood is wrong. Um, and uh, the massing and, and height are different than density, and I hope, I hope that um, you all take that into consideration. I'd also like you to consider that the traffic coming off the project is going to be mostly be going onto the Willoughby Street, which is only 30 feet wide. That's not even um, wide enough to have a uh, fire truck uh, in case of an emergency. Uh, by city code. So um, I would ask that if you do want a project like this in the area, you should ask the developer to reconsider the Thank traffic you, plan. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Val Cagaro, I believe. And Scott Trafford. And then Raymond Jaffe. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, my name is Val Kuklowski. I'm uh, 712 North Sycamore Avenue, 9038. And I'm representing a proxy of 35 people in our area. We're actually living on the east, uh, across from La, La Brea from this project, so we represent a pocket east of that. Uh, our neighborhood has actually seen a resurgence of families over the last five to seven years with dozens of young parents with toddlers and young children that have blessed our residential neighborhood. The traffic situation over the last five years has actually grown incrementally, especially since the Target Center was built five years ago. We can now no longer cross Willoughby safely from any of the perpendicular streets, Sycamore, Mansfield, Orange, and Citrus. There is always a stream of traffic to wiggle through. Uh, the spillover and cross, cross traffic is a constant reminder to all of us that we cannot take our community for granted anymore. Uh, the children that are growing up here in this lovely pocket must now uh, add safety and care to their upbringing, something the parents, I'm sure, weren't prepared to buy into when they chose this neighborhood. Thank you, sir. Please vote against it. Thank you very much, Scott Trafford, Raymond Jaffe, and then we have Sol Major. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Council Members. Uh, my name is Scott Trafford with Madison Marquette. We're a property owner on La Brea. I'm here involved in a large retail property, also one block north, and work in the immediate area. Since my involvement in this area some time ago, I've noticed the beginning of a rebirth in the surrounding vicinity, largely in part due to the property we manage on the corner of La Brea and Santa Monica, as well as small retail hubs that have been created in the vicinity. I believe that, new that the new residential and commercial developments in the surrounding area will help to further develop the revitalization of this part of Los Angeles and will provide many useful uh, popular services to residents in the area, new and old. In regards to this, we wholeheartedly support the redevelopment of the KCOP studios uh, along La Brea and look forward to the continued rebirth of this area. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we have Ryan Jaffe, Sol Major, and Lawrence Phillips. Let's come on up. Ryan Jaffe. Sol Major and Lawrence Phillips. Good afternoon. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Councilman Jack Wise for the wonderful work he's done for our community. <clears throat> we'll miss him. I'm a resident of the neighborhood. I live on Alta Vista Boulevard, north of Beverly. As someone asked if I live north or south of Beverly, I live north of Beverly. 
I have been in the neighborhood since I'm six years old. My parents, who came from Europe, who are Holocaust survivors, settled in this neighborhood along with many of our other uh, members of the community. We have all had families, have many children, and I have, uh, now have married children who are actually, some of them are moving from back east, some of them live here. We don't have enough housing for our young couples with children, and this would be an excellent opportunity to grow the neighborhood and have our families stay where we want them, close to us. It would be new jobs, new, create new jobs for the people in the community, and we very much support the project. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lawrence Phillips. I've been a member of the community for a while. I just want to say that I think it's a wonderful project that Gate La Brea Gateway is doing. It's going to offer wonderful housing. They're pouring millions of dollars in the community and also great jobs. And the area is definitely a transit. It's got a lot of transit and drug people over there. I totally asked you people today to say yes. Just say yes and let's all get along. And I do support La Brea Gateway. Thank you. Okay, colleagues, any questions from the staff or given any questions, issues? You have a question, Councilmember? It's about the planning department. We had a, uh, about a year and a half ago, the planning director and the CRA director announced a, um, a it wasn't really an ICO, but uh, and it wasn't even a moratorium, but they asked that we slow down the conversions from industrial property to residential property out of concern that we're losing jobs and a tax base in the city of Los Angeles. Um, does this apply to that? I mean, does this area apply to that, or how does that policy, or it wasn't really a policy, it was a directive. Does it apply to this project at all? That, the, the discussion about industrial land use and the subsequent creation of a policy was actually a conversation that began after the initial application and public hearing was made for this particular project. Okay. So in essence, that conversation and this project have coincided. Um, an individual policy was created for various industrial areas, and the policy for the Hollywood area provided some flexibility, the extent to which I can't comment on at this time, but some flexibility in that some areas were identified as areas that uh, overturn of industrial land use would be conceivable, and then other areas were identified that should be more closely protected. Yeah. Well, do you know where that directive is right now? Does it even apply? It's just on hold? Are we applying it or not? So this was an application that was submitted before that. What of those, are there any that are being uh, submitted after that directive? Charlie Roush, Planning Department staff. This was submitted prior to the uh, industrial residential uh, program being started in the city. In answer to your second question, the Hollywood Community Plan is currently going through updates. The, when one looks at the applications which are occurring in the area, there are a number of um, studios and uh, motion picture and uh, entertainment company backlot type uh, uses um, which are coming in, in the area to the west I and mean, to the east of La Brea and south of Santa Monica Boulevard. We currently have applications which are actually changing residential uses into industrial to expand this area. This area is basically in, in a, a little exclave to the east I and mean, to the west of La Brea, which is not connected to any other industrial properties um, on that side of La Brea. And this is an older studio which was abandoned a number of years ago and has been basically a vacant building for, I believe, five to ten years. Um, so it was not a studio which was being used by um, the motion picture industry or any other entertainment uses if, in the area. If the planning department were to receive an application to convert uh, industrially zoned land to residential given the directive by our directors of the, their respective agencies, it, it's just frowned upon, but there is no policy, there is no... The uh, policy is actually in the general plan framework, which uh, it encourages not to con convert industrial land into residential uses. Okay, okay. And my, and my, second, my second question is, uh, on the scale of this project, it appears that, uh, is it consistent with the neighborhood? Some of the speakers rose that, uh, raised that issue. This is a large building and is seven stories high. However, one has to understand that this industrial land and the 
area in which it is planned for is of unlimited height in the current height district, which means somebody could build an industrial building, commercial building, anything else, up to 30 stories if they wanted to, they had enough land to do it. Um, it's unlimited as to height. Okay, what about this particular project, though? This I mean, project, I believe, will be 85 feet high along the uh, La Brea Avenue frontage, um, and it's been reduced from, um, I believe, 75 down to 55 feet uh, as you go further into the residential neighborhood. And is it mostly single-family residential around It's single-family, duplexes, and I think some small three- to four-unit buildings going duplexes, to the Duplexes, two, two stories? Two stories. And, and what's this project? Uh, I believe it's seven stories. Okay, okay thank you. Right. This, um, I want to get back to that question on, on the EIR because I want to make sure this is on the record. When the project shifted, it shifted and we heard two points of view. One was that because it shifted to the La Brea side, the tower or whatever was being contemplated, that went up, but we lessened the height that was adjacent to the residential. And because of that shift in, in the design of this facility, that the impact was lessened from the original project design. The further west you go from La Brea, correct, the building does go down in height, which opens up views to the north, which was one of the major concerns. And it's the north uh, side that has unlimited height? The entire um, industrial area is of unlimited height. It's height district one with no restrictions on it. So there's no restrictions, and that was there before this project came into play. Correct. So no matter what had, no matter what could have happened here, let's say for this project, any other project could have built an 80-story tower building, and no one could have stopped that. Correct. I'm sorry. Correct. 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 So I just want to put this in the context. This is a, a, a legal matter we're trying to understand. We're trying to understand impacts. And that in of itself is part of the decision making we have to weigh. So because the project was lessened in impact, it allowed for the change to occur. Correct. They tried to reduce the height going towards the residential area and increase the height along the La Brea uh, Boulevard frontage. Okay. Okay. Right. And, and should I should I conclude Please. here, Mr. Yes. Chair? Um, um, and uh, the, there was an errata that was completed with respect to the EIR. Okay, what's errata for those of us who don't know? change a change okay new you know uh but but not a not a significant earth-shattering change here a, a, an additional bit of analysis was done correct me if i'm wrong uh to reflect a change in the project this being the change here being a downsizing of the project correct and one of the major things they did in the errata was to do a new shade shadow impact study of the project and the shade shadow impacts all fell to the north of the project in the industrial area or along the commercial portions of la brea avenue and not into the residential neighborhoods and planning the city attorney's office had a chance to review the errata is that correct that's correct my office terry kaufman messiah city attorney's office the environmental section did review the errata and in and in your view has has the environmental documentation received the appropriate level of circulation and review in this case? According to the attorneys in the environmental section that reviewed it, yes. And my recollection is that um, the EIR in this case was not an EIR that was mandated by the city, but was one that was requested by my office and completed as a result of that request, right? Correct. Uh, this project received what we call an expanded initial study, which was basically an uncirculated environmental impact report uh, without the project alternatives and the like, and then your office came in and asked for a full environmental impact report. Yeah. Um, and and when, the, when the chair returns, I'll, I'll make a motion. Um, but just to review, uh, there have been a number of changes in this project. 
uh, and you've heard about some of them, but just for the record, the project has seen reduced height along the western portion of the project to create a transition uh, in the multifamily zone. Uh, there's been a reduction in the unit count. We've required uh, that the sidewalks be widened, the addition of right turn project, right turn pockets, required the EIR, as I mentioned a few moments ago, uh, required widening of the street on the north of the project on Romaine to accommodate a better traffic flow, uh, required uh, put restrictions relating to commercial ingress at Willoughby, um, and where'd he go? Where'd he go? Right back. He's right there. Yes. there he is. You missed, you missed the windup, but but when you review the record, you'll you'll see it. I'm sorry, sure. folks. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Um, nature. And, it's uh, nature. In, in any event, Mr. Chair, um, City Attorney went over the business of Eurado. You heard that. I listed a couple of things where the project has been changed or downsized, uh, and additional mitigations and improvements have been tacked on. Uh, as a result of all of that, my recommendation is that we deny the appeals that are before us and adopt uh, the uh, findings and documentation that have been put for us by the staff. Any questions, um, I'll support that position, Councilman. So that's a unanimous so move. That will be the action of this committee. This would, uh, this also closes the public hearing. I'm not sure that was heard. This also closes the public hearing. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, next director, can you please, can you please uh, exit quietly? I think it was item five, but I, I'm not sure if there's going to be a director's there's report. There's no report. <laughs> okay. okay. Do we have one call for public comment? There's no allies for public comment. No allies for public comment. Public comment for five on your agenda. No, no, this is just yeah. regular public comment. Exactly. Okay. Okay. A um, couple of things. One, Mr. Weiss's own motion on the neighborhood councils. It's stuck in your committee. Neighborhood Council's right to appeal. We've done it. It's two years old. I would ask Mr. Race, you consider putting that on your calendar. Secondly, the SB 1818 lawsuit, there's going to have to be a decision made on, on what needs to be done going forward. I would want to advocate for a real opportunity here. One, Mr. Weizar's motion, if you could schedule that before your committee, because that's going to give the public and you an opportunity to see where we're at with regard to which SB 1818 projects have been completed, which are in the pipeline, how much affordable housing, in effect, we've lost by virtue of the application of it, so that you can begin as a city council to start making decisions. I know how important, Mr. Reyes, your um, inclusionary zoning motion is. SB 1818, the inclusionary zoning, as well as the TOPA, Tenant Opportunity to Purchase Act, that can all come together because politically, the Tenant Opportunity to Purchase Act can be the glue that basically gives you the other. So I just would ask you, if you could schedule Mr. Weizar's motion, if you could schedule Mr. Weiss's motion, I would appreciate it. And I, and uh, whatever whatever it takes. Okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> Anybody else have a public comment? Stay on. This meeting is adjourned. Well, I'm getting it down. <laughs> Barbara, you got it right down. Barbara, you got it right down.